just after midnight on March 22nd, 2019 in Stockton, California, near F Street and Finland Avenue. Three young adults were sitting in a car that was actually older than them. On Finland Avenue, a stretch of aging, single-story bungalows in East Stockton, groups of relatives, friends, and neighbors gathered to weep, embrace, and find some small bit of comfort beneath a gloomy sky late Friday morning. Less than 12 hours earlier, rapid-fire gunshots, as many as 40 by one neighbor's estimate, had shattered the midnight quiet, killing an 18-year-old Franklin High School student, her 19-year-old brother, and a male 18-year-old friend. Technically, they died as teens, and yes, that car that they were in when they perished was older than them. Quote, lives are lost, futures are gone, said Rodney Harmon, whose children were friends of the victims. Quote, for what? For absolutely nothing. The San Joaquin County coroner confirmed Friday that the 18-year-old friend who died after being rushed to a hospital was a man by the name of Romilio Castillo, whose friends adoringly called him Remy. The relatives of the siblings went on to say that their names were Tiffany Connery and David Connery. The three late teens became victims of the 5th and 6th and 7th homicides investigated by the Stockton Police Department in 2019. Glass shattered three lives taken after gunfire riddled this Toyota Camry parked on Finland Avenue and F Street shortly after midnight. Boom, 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 just like that. It was a lot of shots. Quick. Neighbors who lived directly across from where the shooting happened heard multiple gunshots. One said dozens. I just heard a bunch of shots, I guess. Sound like firecrackers to me. When it was over, two people were dead inside the car. Family members identified them as 18-year-old Tiffany Connery and her brother, 19-year-old David Connery. A third victim, a close friend of the siblings, 18-year-old Romilio Castillo, was transported to a hospital but died. It's just awful, it's devastating, painful. Alondra Sacedo is Castillo's cousin. She says she spoke to him just hours before he lost his life. And I actually told him that I love you and he said I love you back and we were supposed to see each other today. Family members of the brother and sister who did not want to go on camera say the pair was, quote, super close. Stockton police believe what happened was, quote, a completely random act and says there is, quote, a possible gang component. So we know someone may have heard something or saw something and we need them to say something because we have grieving family members right now that want answers. <laughs> Family members we spoke to said they have no idea why someone would want to shoot and kill their loved ones. Police are asking for anyone to come forward with information in the hopes of solving this triple homicide tragedy. In Stockton, Kurt Rivera, ABC 10 News. Police have a gang member in custody in connection to a shooting in Stockton that left three teenagers dead inside a car. That shooting happened near F Street and Finland Avenue back in March. 19-year-old Joaquin Cruz, as you see here, was recently taken into custody in Oregon. He'll be brought back to San Joaquin County to face murder charges. I was just lost as a kid. I was lost. I ended up getting involved with gangs at a young age and the gangs and the environment, you know, those things that I got involved with made me feel like I was important, made me feel like, like, like I, I had a purpose in life. Stockton police are investigating two homicides in the span of just seven hours, and they happened yesterday on National Night Out, an evening designated every year to get out, meet your neighbors and police, and take a stand against crime. The two shootings happened just three miles apart. The first taking place around 3.30 in the afternoon near Hammer Lane and Lanark Drive. Witnesses say they heard multiple gunshots. A Nissan was hit several times. The 19-year-old driver was rushed to the hospital where he later died, and that was followed by another 
shooting around 10 p.m. near the intersection of Bianchi Road and Calandria Street. Witnesses say there may have been an argument right before the shooting. And the Stockton Police Department is calling on the community after those two homicides. And breaking right now, we are learning that Stockton Police are responding to a new shooting death today. Casey Rodriguez, Melinda Mays is live in Stockton with the very latest. Melinda. Well, we have confirmed that there has been yet another shooting in Stockton today. More details are coming in. Police are at the scene. But we can tell you, police say guns and gangs are at the root of these, vi these violent shootings here in Stockton, and they're asking the community to help. Just some information on our Crime Stoppers program. Stockton uh, police officers are going door to door, talking to people who live in neighborhoods struck by violence. I've been in Stockton all my life. So this is really, really heartbreaking. Here on Acacia Street, a man was gunned down outside his home just two weeks ago. Uh, I just heard, bah, bah, bah. And I thought it was fireworks. And last night, two separate homicides during National Night Out. It's just crazy how many how people have no respect for life anymore, you know. They just, they'll kill you faster than they'll talk to you. This man does not want to show his face. He's fearful because he knows many of the victims shot and killed in Stockton. I got a, a whole arm full of friends killed in Stockton, you know, and um, it's just, it's just, it's out of control. What are gangs fighting for? Well, we see gangs here in the city of Stockton, what they're doing is selling drugs and also selling illegal guns. So a lot of conflicts that happen between the gangs are because of drugs and illegal weapons. Stockton police say they are targeting gang members with programs like Operation Ceasefire and Peacekeepers. And that means going out and talking to these gang members with our peacekeepers. And if we see anybody that is in a gang that they're out there committing crimes, we call them into what we call a call in, where they'll meet face to face. If you don't put down those guns, if you don't stop the violence, you're going to end up in jail. Police say the programs are working. There have been many arrests, but they say they know there is still a lot of work to be done. Even the innocent people is dying now. You know, it's even people that's, that have nothing to do with it, you know, and, and they dying too because bullets don't have names. And Stockton police say they will continue their community, um, their community impact teams going door to door, talking to people, trying to get more information, trying to put an end to this violence. They also say they've had some gang suppression units go out with much success, gang sweeps, and they plan on doing much more. That's the latest right now in Stockton. I'm Melinda Meza, KCRA 3 News. Good to know that they're putting in a lot of effort into this. All right, Melinda. Stockton's sorry. homicide rate ticked up the first three months of the year, but police are saying non-fatal shootings shootings are actually down compared to this time last year. So why? There you see CBS 13 Shante Passmore. She's on this story today getting answers on how the city Shante is trying to prevent more shootings. Well, for one thing, Stockton police say they're taking guns off the streets from people who shouldn't have them to begin with, but they're also giving credit to the city's Office of Violence Prevention. The question, how does it work exactly? Stockton police tell CBS 13 a nine-year-old remains in critical but stable condition following Saturday's triple shooting. Investigators say it appears targeted, but this mother of three worries about her family. Me as a mom of three, it's, it's scary because I can't even take my kids out sometimes. Last week, the mayor shared the city's homicide rate shot up by 114 percent compared to this time last year. The startling numbers has people asking, what's the city doing about gun violence? I understand why. Um, why the community is feeling that way. Laura Larson is a director for the city's Office of Violence Prevention. Since 2012, it began deploying a small group of people called peacekeepers at shootings. Their job is to connect victims and their families to services, whether it's relocation or basic needs. The other part is to intervene and prevent any gun violence stemming from gangs or groups. As we saw Thursday, sometimes they're merely connecting with neighborhoods impacted by violence. Violence. Its model is based on the nationwide program Operation Ceasefire. The city's non deadly shootings slightly dropped recently from 33 to 23 percent compared to this time last year. C
CBS 13 asked people if they believe the city is making progress. The way I see it, a shooting is a shooting. It shouldn't really matter in my, I mean, yes, it matters if someone dies, but at the same time, too, the whole point should be no shooting in general. But the city says their work is making a difference, citing behind the scenes work is often confidential. And I did ask the Office of Violence Prevention whether it will change its tactics, and it simply told me no. The way it sees it, gun violence ebbs and flows, but its strategies prove they work. And definitely, though, a lot of concern in that community. Glad to see that there's somebody trying to help and curb that violence. Shantae, thank you. And a developing story tonight out of Stockton, where police are searching for a gunman who shot and killed a man in his car. This happened last night on East Church Avenue. That victim identified by his family as 56-year-old Bryant Murray. It is the latest in more than a dozen shooting deaths in Stockton in just the past few months. But how does the violence compare to years past and to other California cities? CBS 13's Madison Keevy is getting answers. Madison? Yeah, you know, neighbors have asked what more can be done. They've reported guns, drug deals, and drive-bys, and that's just in the last couple weeks. All of it caught on security cameras. This is why Gloria Young installed security cameras around her house, to track what goes on beyond the safety of her yard. We've lived here 75 years, so I have seen the neighborhood deteriorate. Californians, like Young, say violence and street crime is either a big problem or at least somewhat of a problem in their local communities. That's according to a recent Public Policy Institute of California survey. But we're not the problem. The problem are the people on the streets, and they don't do a damn thing. Getting answers, does Stockton see more gun violence than cities with similar populations of around 300,000 people? Stats from the Gun Violence Archive offer perspective. In Stockton, from March to May this year, there's been 15 deaths due to guns. Last year, during the same period in Stockton, nine people were killed by guns. Compare this year's statistics to Sacramento, with a population of around 200,000 more people, where there's been seven gun deaths in the same period of 2023. Every time there's a significant incident like this one, it's very concerning to us at the police department. Stockton PD will be out on this block to talk to neighbors one-on-one, -on -one, they say, to build trust and get answers themselves. A neighborhood impact a team a walkthrough um, for those that are impacted within the community of these crimes. Young doesn't blame police and says Stockton is safe with a caveat. At this point, it depends what part of the city you live in. Now, I know I compared Stockton to Sacramento, cities that have the generally same population of that around 300,000, like Riverside and Anaheim, in those same last three months have seen less than five gun deaths combined. Now, these numbers are not including injuries or even suspect or subject gun deaths, which would make that number even higher. What's going on, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of Green Lit Gang TV. Really appreciate you guys checking out the channel. Uh, jumping right back into it here, like we talked about in the intro, we are going to Stockton, California with it. Kind of surprising. I haven't covered uh, any stories out of Stockton, California. Um, this one's pretty tragic. Uh, always when you involve young people, when you involve with pretty senseless um, I mean, all the stories I cover are tragic, but I feel like there always are always, always certain ones where it's like, man, that did not have to happen. And uh, sometimes, you know, even as a person, I am religious, uh, you just kind of go, why? You know, why? What is God or whatever you believe in? Why or my higher power or whatever? Why are they, why are they letting this happen? Okay. Um, you know, I used to asked my mom that question because she's pretty religious and uh, she would always say, son, we live in a fallen world. And what that means doesn't mean it's a bad place, but it means that we are imperfect, that things happen and that whatever or whoever you believe in, because again, I'm not going to give out my racial or not racial views, my, uh, my religious views. She said, son, whatever 
God you choose or higher power or maybe you don't believe in God or whatever you believe in that affects the universe or affects your life, that person or entity or whatever gave us free will. And, uh, you know, from there we we make our decisions and we got to live with the consequences of those decisions. So anyway, though, uh, we're going to East Stockton on a stretch uh, on Finland Avenue, a stretch of age old single story bungalows in East Stockton. And like I said, those in the intro groups of relatives were out just absolutely torn apart because 12 hours earlier, three young kids, or, you know, they were technically adults, but they were still teenagers, were gunned down. Uh, that was 18 year old Remail Castillo, and called him Remy. Siblings, Tiffany Connery and David Connery. Um, very, very sad. And Stockton's known for its violence, right? Uh, Stockton is known for gang activity, and it's just a rough and tough place. I'll be honest, as a sports fan, when I think of Stockton, I think of the Diaz brothers. I'm a big UFC guy. I immediately think of Nate and Nick Diaz, the Stockton slap. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so the police come out. They're doing what they're supposed to do. They're doing all the good political stuff. We're going to be relentless. We're going to go after these guys, and we're going to figure out what happened. It's like blah, blah, blah. Sounds good. You know, shut up and go get the job done, right? Um, and it happened on the east coast of Stockton, and or not the east coast, but it happened in East Stockton. There's a lot of different gang sets. The Norteños make up a big faction there on the east side of Stockton. There's a lot of different sets. And I guess doing some research, what I read is there's a lot of inner feuding with these Norteño gangs. Um, a lot of inner feuding with these Norteño sets. And uh, we're going to be talking about Remy Castillo in particular because it came out that one of the Connery's half-sisters, her name was Sarah Maimon or Maimon. And she basically says, it's kind of sad because they all ended up dead, but she basically says, talking about David Connery, her half-brother, that we told him, you're hanging out with the wrong people. Quote, he didn't want to listen to me. He thought he knew better than me. And I think what she might have been referring to was that, you know, obviously the media and reporters are going to go do research on who the victims are and, you know, what might have caused this. And unfortunately, uh, this, it's just the truth. And this is the fact. This is nothing with racial anything. When you see three Hispanic teens in Stockton, California, gunned down in a car, whether you want to admit it or not, the first thought is gang violence. And that's sad. It's extremely sad. But unfortunately, that is the truth. That is the reality we live in today. So they're looking into these people. They look into Remy Castillo. Court records revealed that Castillo was one of four individuals allegedly involved in a carjacking the previous year in September. Now, this happened March 22nd, okay? You got to remember that. This happened March 22nd, 2019. So let's just say six months prior in 2018, Remy Castillo is involved, <clears throat> excuse me, in a carjacking on September 14th in North Stockton, September 14th of 2018. But now the media is jumping back to people that know Castillo. Her name was Alondra Sacedo, 19 years old, describing herself as Castillo's god sister. Struggled to maintain her composure as she spoke of him. She said she will remember Castillo's love of football and sense of humor and recalled speaking to him earlier that week. She went on to say, quote, I actually told him that I loved you and he said, I love you back, Sacedo said. Quote, we kind of grew up together. He's not my blood, but he's my blood because my uncle raised him. So he's my blood cousin no matter what. And, uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that. You got people that you grow up with that are probably closer to you than actually maybe some of your blood relatives. Um, I know that's the case for people I know. Uh, even me, myself. I've got guys that I would consider my brothers. I have a sister. I never had a brother. But I have friends that I'm close enough that I would consider a brother. Um, and another really sad part of this is that, you know, they're talking about Tiffany Connery. She was on her path to college and uh, they got gunned down in David Connery, his first car. He had a job, got his own car and uh, it was a 96 Toyota Camry. And that was the vehicle that him and his sister died in and Remy Castillo. And like we were talking about, that car was older than them, which really gives you an idea how young these, these three individuals were. And, um, again, kind of how tragic this is. 
So they go on to talk about him, give him another girl, Lila Maimon, the 21 year, another 21 year old half sister. Said Tiffany was doing well. Uh, she was doing well at high school. She'd been rewarded by her counselor for a free prom dress and makeover. Uh, she was about to graduate, go on to college a scholarship. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, this, the media, the way they kind of painted this was they kept going back to Remy Castillo. Uh, the person that was in the car with him, obviously, is a friend. I mean, they had a nickname for him. They called him Remy. And I'll just kind of read what he was facing. He was charged with three counts of criminal street gang activity and a single count of second-degree robbery. And bail had been set at about half a million dollars. Um, remember, that happened September of 18. Well, by October 4th, 2018, they dismissed the case, quote, in interest of justice. So they couldn't prove it. And uh, we don't know. You, you can't say Remy Castillo did or didn't do it. Uh, there's no way. Obviously, sometimes they, they don't necessarily prosecute for no reason. But then again, you don't know. Hearsay, a witness, you know, who knows? Um, and I will say I just think it's kind of unfair to – I mean I can see the family's point of view being like, oh, my God. We asked them to stop. If somebody's in a gang, if somebody's in street activity – you can't blame a family member or sisters or parents saying, can you please not hang out with this individual? It's nothing personal, but you guys are about to graduate. You're doing well. You're getting scholarships. You're playing sports. Um, you know, it, it is one of those things. And again, it's nothing personal. And I see both sides of it. I just don't, I absolutely see the family side of it where you go, hey, quit hanging out with him. Okay. He's getting into trouble. It's nothing personal. Stay on the right path. I get that as a parent. I would do the same thing. What I don't like is the media, how they try to portray Castillo as some uh, just not a good person. Or and like, I don't want to say that they made it seem like he deserved it. Um, and I get that they have to try to, not try to, but they have to tell the story. They have to try to make people understand why. So I understand that. But it's just a fine line where I feel like the media really crosses that line to sensationalize things. Um, so what ends up happening is the crime happens March 22nd, 2019. Well... Two and a half later, two and a half, two and a half later, two and a half months later, police make an arrest all the way up in Klamath County, Oregon. And that was on May 30th, 2019. They arrest a 19 year old by the name of Joaquin Cruz. Joaquin Cruz was an Norteño gang member who, even at a young age, had a history, had a criminal history. And they believe this was tied in with Remy Castillo. That's why they believe this was a gang activity or a gang hit because Joaquin Cruz was a documented gang member. Okay, He was a documented gang member. The incident happens just after midnight All right, on March 22nd, 2019. And to give you an exact idea, it was on near F Street and Finland Avenue. That's on the east side of Stockton. All three victims are found inside the car. It's two 18-year-olds and a 19-year-old. And what the neighbor said, and this is the crazy part, okay? This is the absolute crazy part. When they're interviewing witnesses, they're interviewing neighbors. One neighbor says he heard as many as 40 shots that neighbor had estimated. It shattered the midnight quiet, but 40 shots. So it just gives you an idea. I mean, for me, when I read that at first, I go, oh, that's two shooters, Right? Well, police only arrest Joaquin Cruz. He's a documented Norteño gang member. And I'm just going to assume, you know, and again, though, this is where we can't say for sure because maybe David Conroy did something. Again, I'm not trying to say anything, okay? Castillo is the one that had prior charges. Castillo is the one that's been in trouble, that had a serious, serious case dismissed against him the year prior. Robbery charges, criminal assistance. I mean, that's no joke. Maybe he robbed somebody that Joaquin Cruz knew. Uh, but regardless, this is the stuff that's going on. This is stuff that's happening. And what you can see in these stories is the age of the individuals. Um, and for street gangs, by the time you're 19, 20, I mean, you've already done time. Especially, you know, down in California, you've probably been, you know, juvenile. You've probably already been to jail. Uh, you know, 19, maybe I haven't been to prison yet, but it's coming. It's absolutely coming. And like we've talked about in other videos, it's a goal of Hispanic gang members to get to prison. They call it like, you know, to get to the show. That's the, prof that's the major leagues, baby. You want to go make a name? You want to be a big dog? You got to go run with the big dogs. So anyway, there you guys have it. Crazy, crazy story. Appreciate you guys checking out the channel. Peace.